So, so far we have seen a couple of basic Docker commands. We have seen Docker pull, which pulls the image from the repository to local um, environment. We also saw run, which basically combines Docker pull and Docker start, um, pulls the image if it's not locally available and then starts it right away. Then we saw Docker start and Docker stop, which makes it possible to restart a container if um, you made some changes and you want to um, create a new version, which makes it possible to restart a container if you need to. Um, we also saw Docker run with options. The one option that we saw was D minus D, which is detach. So you can run the container in detached mode so you can use terminal again. Minus P allows you to bind port of your host to the container. So very important to remember minus P, then comes the port of your host and then comes the port of your um, container, whatever it might be. We also saw Docker PS, Docker PS minus A, which basically gives you all the containers, no matter if they're running currently or not. We also saw Docker images, which gives you all the images that you have um, locally. So for example, if after a couple of months you decide to clean clean up your space and get rid of some um, stale images. You can actually check them, check the list and then go through them and uh, delete them. You can do the same with stale Docker containers that you don't use anymore or you don't need anymore. You can also get rid of them. So the final part of the Docker basic commands are commands for troubleshooting, which are very, very useful. If something goes wrong in the container, you want to see the logs of the container or you want to actually get inside of container, get the terminal and execute some commands on it. So let's see Docker PS. We have two containers running, right? Now we don't have any output. We don't see any logs here. So let's say something um, happens. Your application cannot connect to Redis and you don't know what's happening. So ideally you would want to see what logs Redis container is producing, right? The way to do that is very easy. You just say Docker logs and you specify the container ID and you see the logs. You can also do the Docker logs if you don't want to uh, remember the container ID or do Docker PS all the time. You can remember the name of the container and you can get the logs using the name. So a little side note here, um, as we're talking about the names of the containers. So here, as you see, when a container is created, you just get some random name like this. So you can name your containers as you want um, using another option of the Docker run, um, which might be pretty useful sometimes if you don't want to work with the container IDs and you just want to remember the names um, or if you just want to differentiate between the containers. So for example, um, Let's create a new container from Redis 4.0 image using a different name that we choose. So I'm going to stop this container and I'm going to create a new one from the same image. Um, so let's run it in the detached mode. Let's open the port 1001, 2, 6, 3, 7, 9 and give the name to the container. And let's call, since it's the older um, version, let's call it Redis older. And we need to specify the image. So remember, this will create a new container since we're running the docker run command again. Um, so if we execute this and check again, we see the Redis 4.0 image based container is created, which is um, fresh new. You can see in the created and the name is Redis older and we can do the same for the other container so that we kind of know which uh, container is what. So I'll stop this one and I will use the same command here. This will be the latest and I will call this Redis 
a test. And since we find another port, so I'm going to run it and let's see. So here I have two containers running. Now I know Redis older, Redis latest. So for example, if um, the older version has some problems, I can just do logs Redis older and I can get my logs. So another very useful command in debugging is uh, docker exec. So what we can do with docker exec is we can actually get the terminal of a running container. So let's check again. We have two containers running and let's say uh, there is some problem with the latest Redis latest container and I want to get a terminal of that container and to maybe navigate a directory inside, check uh, the log file, or maybe check the configuration file, or uh, print out the environmental variables, um, whatever. So in order to do that, we use docker exit command with minus T, which stands for interactive terminal. Then I specify the container ID and I say in bash. So I get the bash and here you see that the, the cursor changed. So I'm inside of the container as a root user. And here, if I say ls, okay, the date is empty. I can also print out in which directory I am. I can go to the home directory, see what's there. Um, so I have my virtual file system inside of a container. And here I can um, navigate the different directories and I can check stuff. I can also print all the environmental variables to see that something is set correctly um, and do all kinds of stuff here. And this could be really useful um, if you have a container with uh, some complex configuration or if, for example, you are running your own application that you wrote in a container and you have some complex configuration there um, or some kind of setup and you want to validate that everything um, is correctly set. In order to exit the terminal, you just do exit and you're out. You can also do the same using the name. Again, if you don't want to work with the IDs and you just want to um, remember the names of the container to make it easier, you can do it with the name as well. Same thing. Um, since most of the container images are based on some lightweight Linux distributions, you wouldn't have much of the Linux um, commands or applications installed here. For example, you wouldn't have curl or some other stuff. So you are a little bit more limited in that sense. So you can execute a lot of stuff from the Docker containers. For most of the debugging work, um, it should be actually enough. So the final part um, to review the difference between docker run and docker start, which might be confusing for some people, um, let's revisit them. Uh, so basically docker run is where you create a new container from an image. So docker run will take an image with a specific version or just latest, right? As a uh, option or as an attribute. With docker start, you're not working with images, but rather with containers. So for example, um, as we saw, Docker run has a lot of options. You specify with minus D and minus P, the port binding, and then you have this name of the container and all this stuff. Um, so basically you tell Docker at the beginning what kind of container with what attributes, name, and so on to create from a specific image. But once the container is created, and you can see that using the, con uh, the command, so for example, here, the last ones that we created, and if you stop it and you want to restart it, but you just need to use the command docker start and specify the container ID. And when you start it, the container will retain all the um, attributes that we defined when creating the container using docker run. So docker run is to create a new container. Docker start is to restart a stopped container. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like it. 
This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.